Welcome to day four, what I will hope will be the uh, final day. So let's have a look where we got to yesterday. So we're looking pretty sweet. We got both those um, reinforcements up and running. The next job is to, sorry, tie out reinforcements. The next thing is to put a guideline point on the back seam. Now, I'm not as worried about the reinforcements on this seam because I'll be able to sew it um, into this, you know, triple layer, oh, is it triple? Maybe it's, yeah, I think it's a triple layer felled part of the seam. But just for safety's sake, I cut a little 10 centimeter diameter circle out, which I'm gonna sew on the inside a little circle out of the 300 denier pack cloth. Just because, with hindsight, I wasn't that happy with how these um, reinforcements turned. Like, I'm happy with them now, but I think if I were to do it again, I should have just used a, a circle about that big of 300 denier pack cloth on the inside and then sewed straight to it, rather than this slightly jankier system. I mean, it's still plenty strong, I think, but uh, it was more effort than just doing this. So this is what I'm going to do this time, and I'm not even that worried about it anyway, because we've got that super strong bit, so... I'm gonna get that sewed in. I'm gonna sew it in the halfway point. Um, I'll just, I'll probably video this one because it's a different thing. We haven't had a video of sewing a circle in a while. There it is, nice and strong. Uh, put three little bar tacks, kept all the stitching uh, here. It may look off center, but actually that's because the, um, if you turn around and look here, you see there's a line of stitching here and a line of stitching here, so that it is centered on the seam. I'm switching tack now. I'm gonna do some little internal loops to hang things off. So I want one on the apex. So I'm gonna put it about here, uh, facing down the back seam. Um, it's important that you don't put ones in this region because this region is going to get uh, twisted up a bit later. So this one I'm going to put right at the edge there facing downwards as that would be my apex tie out point because I like to have one there. I'm also going to put um, tie out points on the side guy lines um, in sort of this position here I think. So that will go through the X pack layer just there on the back. So. Um, I'll video what I'm doing. They're sewn in place, let's get some close-ups. So that's what the one on the apex looks like, little bar tack, and these are what the one on the Guy outs look like the little uh, bar tech. That's a particularly clean bar tech. Check that puppy out. Oh, focus, focus. Yeah. Next up, we're going to sew some tie outs. So, the tie outs we're going to do first are the ones that don't have any line locks on them, and they're the door tie outs. So, if you go from the apex of the tent, um, you come down and there's a corner quite close to it, and you go down from that apex, down, 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 you'll get to this corner here. Now, this corner is a door, and then the symmetrical partner is also a door and the plan is I've cut a piece of webbing 15 mil webbing and I'm going to stitch it along the this is the edge that connects to the apex and I'm going to stitch a tiny little loop of webbing there onto this six layer section here well that's six layer there there must be like 12 layers where you get the double overlap so I'm going to focus all my stitches here so I'm probably going to do two bar one or two bar tacks there and then a bar tack at the end and I'm going to keep a little, nice and small end, and that end will uh, have a loop of rope on it, which will then attach to a hook. There they are, both sewn on nicely. Going to move along to the 
uh, front edge reinforcements now. So if we follow this edge, so there's the apex up there. We follow these edges away from the apex, and we arrive here. Now, it's really important we stitch on these reinforcements at the correct angles. So I've just uh, brought up my pewter, had a look at the angles, and it looks like we want to be at fifth. So this is the one we just did. That's the apex one we did, we followed the edge, and now we want to be at 50.3 degrees, so we can call that. Actually, no, that's probably an archaic unit, so it might be 360, who knows. Um, so, 50 degrees, so I'm going to use my protractor, I'm going to measure 50 degrees, and then I'm going to tack on a reinforcement. I'll show you what the reinforcement looks like. Sorry, not the reinforcement, the tie-out. So, this tie-out has a line lock on it, so... That's what it looks like, line lock 3.0. Um, and we want the line lock to work properly, so we want to sew the line lock upside down. So it's going to be at something that looks a bit like that. Now I want to make sure that all of my stitches land in this double, you know, definitely on this seam, preferably where the two seams overlap. I can feel it's a pretty small triangle just there. That's the strongest point. So what I'm going to do is measure the 50 degrees, sew that on like so. There they are, happy with those ones. This one I had to offset a little bit because this is where the really thick bit was, so it's not quite on the corner, but uh, I think it's better to be strong than accurate on the angles. This angle maybe I was slightly off, but uh, hey ho, I think it's you know within a few degrees. Next up, we're gonna move on to the back one, so I will mark them up with the angles. Let's go check what they are. Uh, so the back ones, we're probably gonna measure the angle off of the square back line and that looks like I need to delete something 46 degrees so we call it 45 degrees from the back to this uh, line so I'll measure those and then sew them on I've got those two sewn in nicely now it's the last one I believe apart from the apex one but we'll do that at the end um, so yeah I'll sew that one in and then we'll move on to 3Ding the tent Nearly there with the circles. I've realized I've got to do another two circles. So these are the corner reinforce. These are going to reinforce where the um, door seams sew to the tent. So what I've done, measured out 30 centimeters in each direction, plop down a circle, and I'm going to put a 300D pack cloth. That's the trace around a kitchen mug. So uh, I'm going to plop those on those two things. I'm going to mask and tape, tape them down really firmly, no slipping. Um, and then we'll be able to sew this seam into there and this seam into there and that will make the tent 3D. Time to do the big stitch. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this seam here down to the corner. I'm going to twist it around. So this is the side that you sewed all the way to the edge to. And it's going to get wrapped round and it's going to be stitched along this line and hopefully finish bang slap in the middle of that circle. Um, I'm going to start in the middle and work my way outwards so it's all correct. I don't want to work inwards because then it might end up with like a loop of material on the inside which you definitely want to avoid. I'm going to do it slowly and carefully.
Okay, that went really well. Here's the apex of the tent at the moment. So you can see um, that line has been we've just sewn this, this line here. Now what we're going to do is take the other loose end and sew it along this line, which I've just drawn on. Um, I sort of could see through the fabric, but if not, I guess you can just go between the center of the circle and the peak. So I'm going to stitch that along. I'm making sure not to stitch through both layers of this. I still want to be able to get to the apex. So, you know, I want to only stitch through so into this layer here. So we're going to stitch this piece of fabric to this edge along this line. Exciting things are happening. So I think we've just sewed peak together. Um, I've just gone ahead and made a few other bits and bobs. So this is just a loop of rope attaching a line lock on this end to a plastic hook, which I had lying around. This is gonna be the um, for the front door. And I've just attached it to all of the leftover yellow rope I have because I'm not sure how long I wanna make that line yet. So I'm not gonna cut any of it just yet. I've also gone ahead and added four two and a half foot uh, beautiful orange guy line. So on one end there's a bowline, on the other end there's a double overhand knot, and I've done that on the square edges. I think I might go and pitch it now, and then that will help me work out how long I need the other guy lines to be. Here I am on the outside. A little bit windy, it's a bit distorting it, but uh, it looks better than it looks on camera. This needs, we need to do the back guy line, that will make that nice and strong. Got to do these guy lines as well, but Overall, I'm fairly chuffed with how it's gone. There's a little bit of tension there. Uh, I think that's okay. Oh, this needs fixing here. Currently, we've got a gap developed. So I'm going to make these two little loops smaller because they're splitting open. So I'm going to make them much smaller so it closes up properly. That overlap's looking pretty nice. This is what it's like on the inside. Pretty massive, I feel. I actually like all spread out. Let me get you some uh, other perspective. Look how big it is! I can't believe how massive this thing is on the inside. Um, it is pitched quite high at the moment. I'm going to try experimenting with the pitches a little bit and see if we can uh, change it up. So I think I've decided not to add an apex guy line. So what I've done instead is um, set up this little. This is how the front's going to work. So this is the left side. This is not the door. Uh, so you can see I've shortened this loop here, done a little orange loop which goes onto the hook, and that's a bit more permanent. I've added this little bypass here, so if this slips out of the hook, then um, you know you can't lose this bit because otherwise it would fall away. Cut the rope for this bit here, and then on the other side, instead of having that really big long thing, I've just got a little tiny, tiny loop now of orange, um, and that is going to just hook into here like so. And that should, uh, that should be a bit better, I think. Welcome to another day. Uh, I think I said that I hoped yesterday would be the final day, but uh, that was probably a bit optimistic because I sat to seam seal the tent, which I had forgotten about. Um, so the order of business today is a few little touch-ups. So I want to split the rear guy line. Oh, I'm not actually sure if I even videoed it yesterday, but basically I added in some more guy lines yesterday and I added like a continuous back guy line, uh, which I want to split into two separate guy lines. Um, I found this new, cool, tiny, weeny little hook that I need to file that down first, but I'm going to add that in um, instead of that massive plastic one, which I didn't really like very much, and it's causing a big bit of V-splitting. The doors are not sitting exactly as I wanted them to. Also need to add in uh, some sort of mechanism to hold the door up, so I'm probably going to add in like a, cross, a bit of loop, a cross-grain loop, and some little bit to hang down so I can tie that up. And then finally, I've got to seam seal the whole tent. So. I'll show you each step as I do them. I've just filed and polished up the hook. Look how sweet that puppy is looking. Okay, I got it up again. Uh, it's looking pretty good. You can see the changes I have made to the front here. So this is just a test of this hook. Um, seems to be working really well. I think what I'm going to do now is sew this hook into this loop to get these two bits even closer to reduce that gap even more. Um, I have also split the back guy line by
by just tying a knot here uh, instead of actually cutting them in half and then added separate tensioners. So I've got a tensioner here and a tensioner here so I can do these at separate amounts of tension. Um, so I think that I was also put a mark on. I have marked something out. Put a mark over here. Then you can see through it. Yeah, I've marked where I want to tie it. So a toggling to hold the door open. That's what she's looking like at the minute. Looking, I'm fairly pleased with it. I've just uh, going for a really high pitch. I know you can see the air gap. That looks pretty cool, doesn't it? Floating tent. Um, and that's just been achieved by jacking up my pole another 10 centimeters. Looks pretty sweet. Here's the hook attachment. Now I'm going to sew it onto the uh, door. There we go. That's looking a little bit nicer now, isn't it? So we've got the hook, which I um, stitched on to the other hoop. So just in case things go wrong, I've still got this loop. Um, hook's working really nicely. I've swapped this out for a bit of orange stuff. I think it'll be a bit more abrasion resistant. Got a nice quadruple loop around onto the line lock and then that looks really nice. And for the first time you can see the door open. I can give you a walk into the tent. Check that out. Big tent. Ta-da! Close up of the um, thing, it's just a loop on this side, a piece of rope going round to a loop on this side. Let's check out the new uh, door buckle and we do it up. That is holding together better than ever, actually. Get really close in, you can see the uh, hook going onto the thing. I might file this hook a tiny bit bigger because I originally filed it for the other cord and this cord is a little bit thicker. It's all holding really nicely. Now I think I'm going to add some velcro to this door. So the door does sit pretty much closed the whole time, which is great. But I am worried, like, if, if I were to pitch it and then the wind were to swing round one night and the wind were to come in and blow under this thing, I mean, it extends, like, for quite a long way in here, overlap, but still, um, so I think I'm going to add a little piece of midway velcro. It's going to keep the two together, so probably just a patch here. I'll go find some velcro. So I've just marked on where I'm going to add the velcro, um, it's about in the middle and the plan is, this is the velcro, to, uh, it's sticky back while I'll stitch it on, uh, so it, one piece there and then the other piece just under this lip and that will just come down and hold the two pieces together nice and strong. Both the bits of Vel Velcro are sewed on. Now I'm going to go pitch it and see if I got them in the right place. Tent set up on the uh, inside. It's really too hot outside today to um, seem seal outside. It's just too sunny. It would, it would just evaporate all my stuff. So I've got um, some white spirit, aka mineral spirits, paintbrush, something to put my stuff in, and my sill net. Plan is I'm going to go around, seam seal the big three seams, one at the back one on the other side. Um, I'm also going to do the apex and uh, all the tie-out points. So I seem to have that bit of Velcro. The plan is essentially if the, the tie-out suit will be on the inside, so the round bits will be sealed on the outside and these lines will be sealed on the inside because otherwise water could get underneath and come in if you just seal them on the outside. So these lines will be sealed on the inside, this line will be sealed on the outside not going to bother seam sealing these bits here, they're too close to the edges, doesn't matter if the water comes in. So here it is, all seam sealed, excuse, excuse the sloppy pitch, but I had to work with the weight. So I just want to talk through where the seam sealing has happened. So there's two different sides at the top. This one, easy to seam seal because it's just a, um, you know, it's just a line of stitching because it's stitched to the inside. So that needs to always be sealed around, put up a bunch of seam sealer, um, in this bit here to just try and strengthen the fabric around the thing, stop the stitch hole elongation. Uh, and then I've also, this one here is much more difficult to seal, so this is the most difficult seam to seal on the tent. Um, 
Theoretically, all you need to do is see it on the inside. I did see it on the inside, but then I wanted to do it on the outside as well, just because of these like overlap points and where you have different layers of stuff. So I sealed it on the inside and the outside, but you've all got to seal the top layer here. But you've also got to seal the back layer as well, because there's obviously a gap where water can come in. Let me show you around. Back layer there. So make sure you get into that. Obviously, you just chuck loads on the apex. Didn't bother with any of these seams here. This seam here, obviously, because it's basically connect water in any way. You've got a seam seal if you put a Velcro on, you've got a seam seal the other side of the Velcro on the inside. Um, obviously you've got a seam seal on this big seam and the other back big seam. With regards to these bits, um, all you should need to seam seal is the zigzag here, so that zigzag attaches to, let's let me get that close up, yeah so that zigzag attaches to the inner attachment point. But you've all, obviously got, you've got a seam seal around the outside here. Um, these lines here, Really, you should only need to seam seal those on the inside, but I just had a bit of leftover stuff in my pot, so I seam sealed them on the outside as well. This is what the back seam looks like. Just seam seal across both pieces, um, all the way around that circle on the outside. Seam seal these zigzags on the inside. Um, I also, I wasn't planning to, but I ended up, because I had a bunch of seam sealer left, seam sealing these um, curved bits here, more just to stop any stitch elong hole elongation because these seams are under quite a bit of load. I also banged a load of seam sealer right on the, um, you know, all over this bar tack here to stop any stitch elongation. Um, I think that covers it mostly. Yeah, pretty happy with it. I will get it pitched up. I will leave it to dry, obviously. I will get it pitched up outside and shoot the video that you saw at the beginning. Um, of the video series.